Hello, I'm Edward Peake, and in this video I'll be telling you five things that you need to know as a newcomer to resin 3D printing that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money. These are things that I wish I knew at the start, but even though I did a lot of video watching and a lot of research, these things didn't come up. I had to discover them myself, and when I did, I felt like a massive idiot. Number one, and this is probably the biggest one, you don't need to clean your resin out every time. A lot of people don't know that. When I started doing it, I thought every time you do a print, you have to clean out that resin tank and do it all over again. And all that's gonna do is eat up your FEP sheets, it's gonna cloud them up, it's gonna waste your IPA if that's how you're doing it. And you shouldn't be using IPA, which is something I'll get onto in a minute. But it wastes a lot of time, a lot of resin, and it just takes so much longer and it makes the process a lot more painful than it needs to be. The only time you need to worry about cleaning up the tank is if a print has failed and there's going to be something left in there that might damage your screen when your plate next comes down and pushes it into the screen. That's about it. Or unless maybe you've dropped something into the resin or something obvious like that. Apart from that, if everything goes smoothly and it prints fine, you don't need to worry about cleaning it up. In addition to this, don't worry about leaving it for a long period of time. You can leave that resin in there for months, maybe even years. As long as you stir it up a little bit and heat it correctly before starting to print, it'll be fine, just the way you left it. It's not gonna go off and become bad, it's resin, not milk. I guess that last one could have been its own point. Oh well, we still have four left. Number two, you don't need to use IPA when cleaning up the FEP sheet. In fact, when you do use IPA, what you'll notice is it clouds up the FEP to all hell, making it slightly worse each time you have to do it. I instead opt for a method I learned from Slice Print Roleplay here on YouTube, where you get a simple microfiber towel, cut it up into small chunks, and he reckons you can do it in about three of them, I always end up using more, but you just gradually wipe down the FEP and then do it until it's clear and clean, and that's it. There's no IPA needed and you don't fog up the FEP sheet. Number three, sunlight. You might not take this into account when you first start printing, but you need to keep it away from sunlight. Any sunlight getting into that, even though there's a UV screen over the printer, if that gets into your resin vat, it's going to ruin prints, and it's going to make that resin harden, and sometimes make it nearly impossible to get it out of the vat, wasting you a lot of money and a lot of time, and it's very frustrating to get it off. I pretend your 3D resin printer is a vampire and stick it in the corner in a little coffin to keep it out of the way of any sunlight whatsoever, because it will ruin everything, and make your printing time living hell. This also goes for cleanup. An issue I have at the moment is the only space that I have to do my cleaning up, considering where the space I have in the garage is very small. It's in front of a window. So when I take my plate off, I have to get all that resin off real quick before it hardens to it. And as you can see here, it's already kind of ruined, but it still works. All of that is just from me cleaning it up in front of a window. Well, and also using really cheap shop cloths, which just covered it in blue dust, which is really annoying to get off. Number four, temperature. This is another really big one. It will make the difference between a fail and a success. And for me, the way I've solved my problem of it being quite cold as I live in England, you just wrap a fermentation belt around that vat and that would do the trick. Although saying that mine is metal, so the heat conducts a lot better. If you have yourself a plastic one, then just finding another way to heat it is gonna solve a lot of problems. I have seen some people online just use a space heater near their printer, so if you do have a plastic vat on your printer, then maybe that's an option for you. Number five, and this is one that I messed up multiple times when I started doing printing. Leveling the plate, there is an art to it. It's a simple method, but as soon as you crack it, it makes things way easier. 3D Printing Pro has an excellent tutorial to this, and he has been my shiny-headed lord and saviour whilst I was learning to do all this stuff. In his tutorial, he will show you that when the plate has come down and you've tightened it, you can check whether it's tightened properly or not by pulling at each corner of that paper. And if it doesn't move, then great, it's tightened properly. And if it does move, that tells you it isn't leveled properly and you have to do it again. It's so simple, but it's really the only way of properly checking. And like I mentioned at the start in point number one, like emptying out the vat each time, leveling the plate each time is another thing that you don't have to do, which I was doing way too much of at the beginning. Once that is leveled properly, you can leave it until it stops working. Unless you do something like you drop it on the floor or you hit it against something hard, that level isn't going to change. Now this video might say I was going to mention five points, but I'm dyslexic, so point number six. Tightness of the FEP in the vat. Now, something that I found with my one is if I quite literally just tighten it as tight as it will go on the vat, that is the correct tightness. I have a Photon Mono X, so if you have the same model as me, chances are that will probably work as well. Now I imagine most printers have the same thing in mind, but I don't know that all of the ones will work like that, or if even other models of mine will work like that. 
So another method is to get a spectrometer on your phone and then hit the vat with a very light item that isn't going to dent it and then that will tell you the frequency and from there you can adjust. The frequency you want might vary but for mine it's about 320-350 Hz. This now be the end of the video so uh, like the smash button and all that jazz and if you think I'm wrong on any of those points uh, let me know in the comments below as it drives up engagement.